Happy first Sunday of January, everyone. You know what that means. The patrons have spoken once again, and this time they voted in Beedrill. Evolving from the hapless Weedle and Kakuna into such a menacing looking creature with a signature move in Twin Needle to boot, it's been a fan favorite since the earliest days of the first generation. It was also one of those Pokemon along with Butterfree to be able to evolve super quickly to help you out early game in the adventure. But then later on, it kind of plateaus when everything else gets stronger. Anyways, in the anime, this thing has had many appearances, usually in a swarm, as the characters run away from it. But did this scary stinger have what it took in the competitive scene? Let's find out by posing the question for the first time in 2019, how good was Beedrill actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Unfortunately, Beedrill is one of the worst Pokemon around, and spoiler alert, this is going to be the case for the next several generations, as I think most of you already know, because it is just awful at the most basic level. Even in the first generation, its stats, typing, and move pool are absolutely miserable. Its best stat, which is attack, is well below average, its defenses are appalling, and it doesn't help that its typing makes it weak to Psychic, which is one of the worst things for a red, blue, and yellow Pokemon to be. Only Victory Bell holds this to Distinction of sorts and still functions in overuse. Beedrill may have the super effective Twin Needle to use against these psychic types, but it's so pathetically weak that even when it hits the quad effective Executor, it maxes out only at 67%, while Psychic is a clean, cold one hit KO in return. And it's slower than the others, barring Slowbro, who it's still not exactly great against. Not that it matters when it's so helpless against everything else, and it can't exactly switch into Bro either. It's also utterly torn apart with no hope of recourse against the rocks and flails rather helplessly against Tauros, Snorlax, Zapdos, Lapras, Gengar, and Cloyster. A Swords Dance Hyper Beam does a rather hefty chunk to Chansey, but Reflect variants don't care, and it doesn't matter much when, like with Slowbro, Beedrill's never getting by Chansey's teammates and can't even safely switch in on Chansey itself. In fact, it's not even good and underused. Too slow, weak, and frail. Good Pokemon generally don't have these qualities, so avoid RBY Beedrill at all costs. Now on to Gen 2, as if the new Pokemon editions of Skarmory, Fortress, Steelix, Tyranitar, Raikou, Suicune, and Mischievous weren't bad enough, old standbys such as Snorlax, Zapdos, Gengar, Rhydon, and Cloyster continued their reign, and to top it off, everything got leftovers, so Beedrill was even more inept at killing anything. At least this time, it got real stab moves in Sludge Bomb and Hidden Power Bug, but the latter still couldn't even one-hit KO Executor. Also, it was completely outclassed as a bug type by Scizor, and in this generation, Scizor was not even that good. It was almost merciful that spikes were introduced this generation, so in case anyone made the mistake of bringing Beedrill, there would at least be a timer on its awfulness. Beedrill was unusable and underused as well. Again, yeah, just avoid it. Now on to advanced, there's Tyranitar Sandstream, Skarmory's 3 layered Spikes, Levitating Gengar, incredibly tough new Pokemon like Swampert, Salamence, Jirachi, and Metagross, Dugtrio's dangerous Arena Trap, and of course the continued reign of the incredible Zapdos and Suicune. This is but the tip of the iceberg regarding the standard level of Gen 3 overuse. As you may be able to surmise, Beedrill does not belong anywhere near such company. It is bad against literally every single Pokemon in overuse. If you really want to use an offensive bug in overuse, just use Heracross because Heracross is actually amazing, unlike Beedrill, who is walled and outsped and killed by everything. Also, you can forget about underused for our honey-bringing friend too, and off to never used it goes. Even there, it's outclassed by the likes of Raticate of all things. So, yeah, rip Beedrill. Alright, Diamond and Pearl, the power creep of the fourth generation, was enough to knock out even some of Advance's veterans, such as Regice and Claydol. Thus, it's no surprise that Beedrill was nowhere near being an afterthought in this generation. Despite getting some cool moves in U-Turn and Toxic Spikes, it was still not going to do anything when old and new Pokemon alike just destroyed it. Not only was Skarmory still around, Heatran had joined it. Now in Underuse, some sets for it technically existed, but Baton Pass variants were entirely outdone by Scyther, so the only thing that Beedrill could theoretically do was be a toxic spikes lead, ideally taking advantage of its low defenses to bring something down to 1 HP with Endeavor. However, a toxic spikes lead is not so desirable when Venusaur is everywhere to soak them up upon entry, so this means that one's lead slot was wasted. Not to mention the fact that Beedrill tended to get completely dominated by common leads such as Miss Magius and Quillfish. Thus, the star of the B movie was never actually used, or it dropped to never use, and didn't do anything interesting there either, what with Regirock and Charizard at every corner. Once more, Beedrill was the pits. 
and it just gets crueler by the generation. Obviously, Beedrill was never going to do anything in a land of permanent weather abusers, dragons, and Ferrothorn, to say nothing of miscellaneous monsters such as Terrakion. It did get Drill Run, so Heatran was no longer a counter, but that didn't really change anything. Even with the introduction of a new lower tier, Beedrill still didn't fit into even the bottom of the heap, as it was now completely outclassed by Garbodor and never used. Sad as it is, it's just a complete waste unless you're using a joke team, in which case it's the best, just like Letty. On. Now on to Gen 6, X and Y came, and nothing changed for Beedrill. It had to stand by and watch as everything got stronger. But then, and I'm sure you've been waiting this whole video for me to get to this part, Oraz came around, and at long last, Beedrill finally got something. A mega evolution. Now while it did nothing for Beedrill's defenses, suddenly its attack and speed were jacked up to levels resembling that of Uber Pokemon. It has the same attack as freaking Groudon, and to make things better, it gets an ability that makes it even stronger, with the ability Adaptability. Of course, it was still frail and stealth rock weak, but with the addition of fairies, especially the dreaded Clefable, Beedrill now had actual prey and could keep momentum for its team with brutally powerful U-turns that would leave a dent even in Ferrothorn. Now, it was walled by Gliscor, Skarmory, and Landorus Thurian, but it could set up toxic spikes in games where it was met with defensive teams packing them, which could be crucial to support its team in the wall-breaking effort. Against offensive teams, it darted in and out, but unfortunately, it ended up not lasting in the tier thanks to its fellow Megas being much easier to use, and its flaws still being pretty exploitable. But it was a sight to see. Beedrill for once was actually effective in overuse. It wound up dropping to underuse, but much like Pidgeot, this is where it was tremendous. It rounded out its stabs with Drill Run to smash Kabalion, and it was one of the premier offensive threats. The prominence of Defog helped with Beedrill's stealth rock weakness, so it could slice through everything with that terrifying U-turn. Since it needed to use Protect to safely get a Mega Evolution off, this also allowed it to scout the intentions of faster Choice Scarf Pokemon. However, the biggest thorn in its side was a fellow Mega in Aerodactyl, who was faster and packed Pursuit, which would make quick work of the B. However, it was a fantastic Pokemon overall, whether it was picking off opposing offense or Swords Dancing its way through stall, and one of the defining Oraz underused Pokemon. Plus, its stint in overuse is not forgotten. Finally, Beedra won in a major way. Now on to Sun and Moon, the 7th generation saw pretty much the same pattern as the 6th for Beedrill, except it didn't really appear in overuse at all, except for one gimmicky team used by a couple of brave slash crazy players, depending on how you look at it. But overall, it just wasn't worth it. But it wasn't a bad Pokemon at all, it just wasn't overused material. However, once more, it's shown in underuse, and thanks to it now getting its 145 speed, as soon as it mega evolved, it could finally drop Protect for a 4th move, increasing its utility even further. It mostly used the buff knockoff to cripple walls, while not passing up on the crucial coverage offered by Drill Run. Although Toxic Spikes, Pursuit, and Swords Dance were great choices as well. Of course, Mega Aerodactyl and its own Pursuit, boosted further by Tough Claws, remained a thorn in its side. But overall, it was a major threat in the metagame once more, because not only did its own attacks, pardon the pun, sting, but its own U-turn kept up the pressure for its fearsome teammates. Now before we wrap it up, you may have noticed a lack of VGC presence for Beedrill, even after it got its Mega. Sadly, much like Singles, it was too frail and the environment was way too harsh for it to be of any use in pre-Mega, and was thus nowhere to be found. Like seriously, it doesn't even have any gimmicks like Fake Out or whatever. But the sad part is, even after receiving its Mega Evolution, though there seems to be a count of its use in early rounds, there are no notable placements for it. Which isn't surprising because it still honestly had many Predators. In 2015, when Mega Beedrill debuted, Talonflame murdered it for obvious reasons, as did the ubiquitous ruler of the tier, Mega Kangaskhan, as well as other big guns like Landorus Therian, Heatran, and Aegislash. Mega Beedrill just can't compensate for Intimidate very well, and even as a Mega, it's still too frail, thus getting destroyed by priority and other common super effective moves. Not to mention, it's hard to give up the Mega slot to use Beedrill over a much better Mega. In 2016, the aforementioned threats still existed, and so did the so-called Ubers. So basically, it was the same deal minus Talonflame for the generation, and in Gen 7, once again, yeah, no notable use. Say la vie. And that's it, so how good was Beedrill actually? Well, until it got its Mega Evolution, Beedrill is one of the worst Pokemon ever. And that's not inaccurate or harsh. But after it Mega Evolved, it didn't quite become overused material, although it does mean something to see it in that environment at all, as more than a joke. But it did become one of the best underused Pokemon alongside former overused Titans, such as Blissey and Infernape, which is far more than it ever could have dreamed of prior. So there's that. And as for VGC, it was destroyed 
destroyed by pretty much all of the metagames, so there's not a lot of hope there. Beedrill was given a new lease on its life with its mega evolution, to the extent that they even dropped its special attack so they could pump more into attack and speed and not go over the plus 100 base stat total limit. And this shows that there may be hope for even the most dismal Pokemon out there. Yeah, so if you see a crappy Pokemon, just throw a mega on it, maybe it'll be okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Shout outs to the patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for this Pokemon this week. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. And follow my crew and whatnot on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next week, everyone.